What's up, Internet? How's it going? I'm Jason DeRussia, in for Christian Cordero. This is the 734 from WCCO. Great to spend a little time with you online here as we bring you up to date on uh, some really great news. We have a great ending to a really scary story from overnight. We'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to let you know what today's weather is going to look like. And it's kind of crummy, to be honest. Like, it's not going to be a great day. Today, if you're uh, looking to do some uh, yard work, every leaf you rake up is going to blow away. So don't bother. Winds about 10 miles an hour around lunchtime. There will be a few breaks of sunshine. 50 degrees will be the high. It's chilly this morning. 50 is below average, but things turn around very nicely. If you have the next couple days off as part of MEA weekend, uh, maybe you're doing some college visits or uh, just hanging around the house. It's going to be terrific over the next several days. Speaking of MEA weekend, for 2,000 teachers who are registered, tomorrow's going to be a chance to go to seminars, learn about new ways to better teach. The MEA conference, though, used to be two days. Now it's just one. It's on Thursday. Some school districts are talking about what to do about this. One is getting rid of the traditional MEA break, according to the Star Tribune. In Apple Valley, Egan, they're going to have school on both Thursday and Friday next year. They'll add one day onto winter break and end the school year a day earlier. Some other districts are saying, look, we think this conference is important. We want teachers to go. But they're hesitant to give kids Thursday off school and then say, OK, come on back on Friday. So we're asking, what do you think? Should kids still get a two day MEA break? If you're watching on WCCO's Facebook page, leave a comment right through uh, right here, right in the comments, and we'll share a few of those in a moment. It was a long night of search and rescue in Sherburne County, but one with a very happy ending. Six year old Ethan is safe. Took more than 10 hours. More than 600 people showed up to search to help find him. Police say Ethan went missing right after school yesterday. He got off the bus and then ran off to play with the family dog near his home just north of Becker. But the family couldn't find him. And that prompted the massive turnout of volunteers. Now, among those helping, this man with a drone. WCCO was there as he kind of got the drone set up, launched it. He is ultimately the one who found Ethan in a cornfield. That drone was using a, a heat seeking camera. He was found with the dog alive. The sheriff said he couldn't emphasize his gratitude for the volunteers enough. It appeared that, according to the officers on scene, that the search team may not have found him going through the, that area of the cornfield. And it was the drone that actually found him a ways away. And if not for that drone, I'm not sure that we'd have found him. Isn't that cool? Ethan was taken to the hospital to get checked out. He was pretty cold last night, 40 degrees or so, uh, but he is going to be okay. So we'll continue to follow this right here on Facebook and on Twitter throughout the day. Let's talk about the debate. A dozen Democrats getting together in Ohio. Uh, you know, I mean, these guys agree on most of the issues, right? They were unified on whether or not President Trump should be impeached. Uh, they're for it. But they were tough on each other. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren was a frequent target, in part because she refuses to say whether she'll raise taxes to pay for her plan of Medicare for all. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar was among the most aggressive. At least Bernie's being honest here and saying how he's going to pay for this and that taxes are going to go up. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but you have not said that. And I think we owe it to the American people to tell them where we're going to send the invoice. I put out nearly 50 plans on how we can fight back and how we can rebuild an America that works. And a part of that is we Thank have you, got Senator. to stop Sen Americans from going bankrupt over health care. Senator, the difference between a plan and a pipe dream is something that you can actually get done. Candidates do face some tougher fundraising and polling thresholds if they want to participate in the next debate in November. Senator Klobuchar and a handful of others have not yet made the list. We'll see if this debate makes a difference. Bernie Sanders has picked up a bunch of major endorsements, including Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, who said late last night that she is endorsing Sanders for president. Sources saying Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will also be backing Sanders. Incredible video coming out of California this morning. Take a look at your screen. Massive fire destroying thousands of gallons of fuel at a San Francisco Bay Area refinery. One point officials told thousands of people just to kind of make sure their house is uh, closed up and to stay inside with all of the smoke in the air. 
They're still trying to figure out what started the fire. If you've ever had a Yahoo account, and I know what you're thinking, Yahoo account? Who has those? Well, you might have had an email account. Maybe you were on Flickr. Maybe you had a, a Yahoo Fantasy Sports account. Well, if you did, someone breached your information. There was a lawsuit. Now you could get more than $300 in cash. Several data breaches have compromised users' personal information in recent years. Yahoo is huge. So many people had Yahoo accounts at some point between January 2012 and December 2016. So that's the window. If you had a login, you can get a chunk of the $117 million settlement. I went online this morning and filled out my claim for that. Uh, pretty easy, pretty easy to fill it out. We have information on uh, the website you need to go to at WCCO.com slash links. Hey, uh, a lot of us are iPhone users uh, and think I'll never use anything else. Uh, but Google might be tempting you with its next generation smartphone, the Pixel 4. Show you some of the new features of this device. These Google phones always have really nice cameras. This version has a faster facial recognition, the motion sense, the gesture controls, those are quicker. It has a new look. The camera is telephoto. So that should be nice. And it also features this new auto transcribing app that uses artificial intelligence to translate audio into text in near real time. Imagine that, like if you're at a lecture or a meeting, you can just translate that right into text. That'd be cool. Starts at 800 bucks, which seems what cell phones cost these days. And it ships next Thursday. Google also unveiling its answer to AirPods. Uh, these are like the dorkier AirPods, let's be honest, right? I mean, AirPods are for sure like a fashion and a status symbol. And this is like someone took a giant white uh, button and just shoved it in your ear. They're called Pixel Buds. My description is not what Google PR sent out. They do say they can run five hours on a single charge, 24 hours with one of those uh, cool wireless charging cases. Google's wireless headphones cost about what? Purely wireless headphones cost around $180 when they launch next spring. NASA astronauts have some new gear for their upcoming missions to the moon. Work it, astronauts, yes. New space suits, oh yeah. The white one there is for moonwalks. The orange one is for travel. Because here's the thing, like you need an, an outfit change when you're in space. I mean, if Lady Gaga can change outfits uh, 14 times in a concert, the astronauts can certainly change their looks. This is so funny. The dude in the suit talking about the spacesuits. Uh, in the business suit, not the spacesuit. If the agency gets the funding, NASA is hoping to send astronauts back to the moon by 2024, at which point these spacesuits will be so out. So out of fashion by 2024. Okay, you can now follow Jennifer Aniston on Instagram. Thank God. I've been wondering, when can I get my Jen? Less than 24 hours, she's already racked up 8 million followers. Her first post of the Friends cast actually caused the app to crash. <laughs> uh, her caption said, and now we're Instagram friends too. Hi, Instagram. It already has nearly 9 million likes. Hey, Jennifer Aniston has a new show out. How about that? It's uh, on Apple TV Plus that comes out on November First, all right, let's talk about MEA weekend. Should it be cut down to just two? Well, it's, it's two days now. You get two days off. A lot of people make it a four-day weekend. Some school districts are saying, eh, they're only doing one day for the conference. Should we really give kids all this uh, time off at the beginning of the year? Our digital guru, Cole, is here. Cole, what are people yeah. saying? Yeah, we have Katie saying, with my kid hat on, yes. They should still have a break. <laughs> yes, And of to course. be clear, I have no kids, she says. Um, then we have Becca saying, good morning. Uh, that two-day break is much needed. I, I would bet those teachers could use that day Friday off, too. I'm sure. Is it much needed? School just started like a month ago. I mean, is it, I mean really? Teachers got a tough job. I, that is true. Um, we've got Tracy saying, kids are out of school more than it, uh, it seems these days. Yeah. Uh, they're taking valuable t learning time away. And then we have Gene saying, I think it's tradition. Why change it now? That's kind of the thing, right? Like, it is fun to be able to plan a vacation when the rest of the country is not on vacation. Yeah. You can go to Disney World and not have it super crowded. Yeah, yeah there you go. Well, we're going to La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's vacation. Oh, last year we took the kids to Hudson. <laughs> In other news, my kids hate me. <laughs> it's true. That's it, 734. We're done. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, everybody.